100 dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is the 23rd video in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application for managing tabletop role-playing. We are in the midst and getting near the end of um, the setup, uh, install setup and testing of Devise. So we've uh, 11 out of 15 tasks are complete. In this particular video, we're going to take a look at the ability for the user to update um, the email address. So we'll move that into in progress here. And uh, this is going to be off of the same page that we did previously our change email password test. So we'll wind up, unless the class gets too long, I think adding those email um, update tests into this um, this test class. So let us get right into it. We will fire up our development server and demonstrate the functionality. So go to, well, make sure that this is okay. Log in as a user. That user might not long no longer exist. I think that was one of the ones we got rid of when we um, our previous video where we canceled our account. So we'll. Um, see if this user still exists. Nope, we'll just sign back up as our testing two user. So we've got a confirmation link sent to the email address. We've already tested this. And this is going to be depending on whether it uses the um, confirmation token like user signup does or whether it does a hashed token with um, what the um, reset password did. We'll wind up having to deal with that accordingly, but I should be able to now I've confirmed my email. And now we can go to manage your account. This is the page where we were changing our password. So now we wanna be able to change our email. So we've got a couple of different scenarios. So we'll, we'll just change this to testing22 at example.com. And we'll have a, an error scenario here because we need our current password in order to confirm changes. So this will say um, email has already been taken. Uh, so we can't, that's a, another error scenario and then current password can't be blank. In fact, that might've been the, the problem with the, um, that testing to user. Maybe we've already, I had already done that with it, so. Uh, those are our two error scenarios here. Um, we probably still have the, the email form validation issue going on here. Yeah, so we still have to test for that, similar to what we did in our sign up. And then we've got email has already been taken current password can't be blank and then if we make this testing to zero and we type in the password here we'll click update your updated account successfully, but you'll need to verify your new 
email address. Click the email and follow the confirmation link to confirm your new ad email address. So this will take us to users confirmation and confirmation token is the, the user here. We will take a look at this user in the console and see whether this matches this value here. user dot email is still the testing two here. So we've got unconfirmed email here. And then we've got the confirmation token. So that will be the user's confirmation token. So that will be more like our signup flow. So let's go in now and I will pause and write the, um, the, the test scenarios that we just talked about um, just in skip form and then we'll, we'll implement them. All right, so we've got our test scenarios here and I can already tell that this is going to be too much to do in one test class so I'm going to go into my terminal here and we're going to go into test system devise and we're going to copy this into change email password test and change, um, and then this will be change email test. And then I'm going to do a git move. I'll do that at the end, actually, after I commit the code. But so this is going to just become change password test. And this is going to become change email test are in change email um, we instead of new password we'll be dealing with new email and we'll make it nerdy.dice at example.com will be the new email. So, and then we'll log in with the user. All of these password tests are no longer applicable in our file here. And then 
we so change password test registrations edit preconditions we're calling everywhere I'm pretty sure we're gonna rename this method to standard password edit preconditions oops H here. All right. Let's make sure I haven't broken that test. existing file that we've got here. All right, so that all succeeded except for the fact that we've got all these skips that we can get rid of now. See if we can move this now. Uh, close the file entirely. change password test changes have not been staged for commit yet but I think that's fine Let's make sure that we still work here So that's still succeeding. And then in our change email test, we've got our new email, our current password, and our standard, call it email edit preconditions. conditions. our form name here, email. All right. 
So that gives us the basis for what we need in order to implement these um, these different tests. I'll pause and write my first iteration now of implementing the successful email um, valid address test. All right, so we've got our email um, with a valid address here. I did uh, notice in the manager account here, this back um, link here is not styled. So I'm just gonna style that as a standard link. Refresh the page, now that, that back is more clearly a link. Uh, anyway, we'll get to this now. So we're going to um, we we're going to save our old email so that we can do some assertions with it, um, and then we're going to um, do our standard email edit assertions, which is go do our logged in welcome page assertions, click on manage your account, do the assertions about that, and then we're going to fill in our email with the new email and um, current password with our current password. So we've got that. Um, and then we're gonna click on update. We should expect to see the flash text say that you've updated your account successfully, but we need to verify your new email address. Um, and that's it's a fairly long flash message, but that's, um, that's that. We'll, we'll wind up uh, refactoring this out so that it's um, we're only writing that string literal one time. Um, so this is um, so here you can see the other thing we're doing is we're revisiting this page to um, it, it shows currently waiting confirmation for and showing your your new email with the old email still there. So we want to test that is. Um, the case. So uh, we're also doing a user reload um, after we click on this. Uh, the new email that we um, supplied via the form becomes the unconfirmed email for that user. We're going to assert that the user's confirmation token is um, not nil. And then uh, we're going to um, assert that the old email is still the value in the user email. Um, then we're going to visit the user confirmation URL uh, with the user's uh, the instance variable user's confirmation token. Um, and we're going to um, assert that your email has been successfully confirmed, reload the user, assert that the user dot email is now the new email. Um, we'll also assert well, no, I don't think the confirmation token changes to nil when we do that. Um, anyway, we will and then we'll, we'll click on the back button, log out, and then ensure that we can log in with the new credentials. So the new email and current password and then we should expect the login page assertions to work. So we'll save that and we'll try running it. button back so that got us to line 40 here oh because it's not gonna so after we confirm our email let's see where that takes us. Oops. Takes us 
nowhere if we shut down the server. Where did my email go? There we go. Control Shift C. So after you enter this, it um, redirects you to the um, the root URL. So we should just be doing. Now, let's rerun that test. Now we're passing. All right. So we will go in. Let's see here. We'll do that. Um, the invalid confirmation token test next because that shares the most in common with this um, change email to a valid address uh, flow there. So we'll, we'll, I'm going to write this one and refactor out the common code that we have between these two, um, these two methods. So I'll pause and do that. All right, so we've got our um, Take a look at our old and new emails here, our situations here. So the we've got email change happy path unconfirmed. And what I did here is I took the code, moved it into this method here. I made old email an instance variable rather than a local variable, variable like we had it before. But otherwise this uh, all remained the same. And we, after we do this, we visit the confirmation URL, but this time with an invalid um, token, and then we should see similar to what we saw in the user signup test, um, resend confirmation instructions and uh, confirmation token is invalid. So this would be if we go and Change this back to testing two. And we'll do it first with a bad token. See, it takes us to the resend confirmation instructions um, page um, with the confirmation token is invalid and the resend confirmation instructions um, there. So that, and then we're going to uh, reload the user and assert that the um, the user's email has not changed. So we will run our tests. Got at least one green, two greens. All right, so that has worked as expected. Next, we'll hit the uh, email change uh, fails. Actually, we'll do that one last. We'll do uh, email address has been taken. Um, and um, I will actually, since these are so similar to um, the ones in user sign up, so um, email has already been taken. Um, the and then the other one the 
um, old password invalid. Those are all stuff that we've done before. So I'll, I'll do them all and then we'll talk, just show them and um, go through them. All right, so we've got our methods, our error scenario ones that are similar here. So um, email change fails if email address has been taken. We do the standard email edit preconditions. So getting us to the, um, the point here where we we're filling in the email and current password by default each time, uh, just so that it's, um, we don't have to do it every single time and then we'll overwrite it if it's changing. Um, so here we're, we're filling in the email with the email of a different fixture user. Um, and then clicking on update expectation is that it'll say the email has already been taken. Um, we've already done the confirmation one and then uh, old password is incorrect. So fill in current password with a password that's not the current password. Um, and then uh, current password, fill it in blank. Um, and then current password can't be blank. This one we don't have on the change password test. So I'm gonna just um, add this in here. And it's gonna be standard. Similar styling here. All right, so we should be down to one skipped test now. down to one skip test. We'll also run our change password test since I added a new one. That's all passing. And now the last one we have to implement is the um, email change fails if invalid email format. And what I'm gonna do here is in the user sign up test, we've got the email format um, where's our email for format error here. So we're doing page.find um, dot native attribute uh, validation message and we'll wind up doing the exact same thing here so I'm gonna um, move that out into a, um, a helper method in um, application system test case called get validation message so we'll pass you, you'll pass in the selector for the element page dot find and then um, you'll uh, get the, the string value of that back so I'll just just calling that out as um, something I'll I'll do. So I'll implement that and we'll talk through it. All right, so we've got our uh, email in valid format. Uh, I created the uh, item in application system test case that essentially does what we were doing there, passing in the current selector and then getting native.attribute.validation message. So when we save this and run it, it should, uh, let's show and see, it's got the um, that message that we'll wind up seeing. Um, and that will end that particular test. So let's see if our, make sure I saved everything. 
and implemented the method correctly. The input validation message, I may have uh, hit input validation message. Application system test case. That is saved. That is saved. Okay. I had it named form validation message. I must have not saved it again. Let me try to rerun that. Now we're passing. Uh, we'll do the same thing in our user signup test. this point, let's run the full suite. Because we are nearing completion here. While we're running this, um, I guess Feel free to check out some of the other videos that we've got going. Uh, we have this whole series where we've, where we've been going through Devise. We have a uh, series on getting started with Rails 7 where we go through the getting started guide. Uh, and then I've got a Ruby gem called Nerd Dice that will wind up implementing in this project later on that um, has some cool stuff like metaprogramming using method missing to dynamically define methods and stuff like that. So we are all passing. Let's see what the Rubo Road Pirates have to say about our shenanigans. Three. Line length. And then method length. So one of those at least is autocorrectable. Line length. All right. It's going to make our line length even worse to break that out. I guess we can put that in our setup. Call it email validation flash. just the email change happy path 
unconfirmed. Let's call. Bang method. Let's see if that gets us under quota, we need to at least rerun that one test class. I think we're good to go now. Let's see here. So We add the styling to the back class. We um, added that method to application system test case. We did some modifications to the, um, change the email password test down to just password um, test. We um, renamed that method everywhere, added the new test for the blank password, and then um, we were so this, okay, this is in user registrations. So the user sign up test, we did that. So that all looks good. Add, commit, write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. Close that, make sure I've got nothing unsaved. Working tree is clean. Push to the remote. While I am waiting for the build, move this Task to done here. Edit our list of tasks here. We haven't had an action fail in a long time. I'll just um, end the video here. In the event that something comes back up, I'll add an addendum. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.